Um, hello. So first off, I guess I just want to say um, thank you to those of you who watched my video on Tuesday. Uh, there were quite a few of you who had some really nice things that you said to me afterwards that, and afterwards that, that's not a turn of phrase after that, I guess. <laughs> um, and I just really appreciated that because I was nervous about posting that, so I really appreciated that, so thank you. Anyways, I've been thinking about things since then and I realized that I had some more things that I would like to say. So I wanted to make a second video and also Mariko wasn't feeling well today, so it worked out that I'm gonna give you part two of Hannah Talks About Stigma today and then Mariko is gonna lay down some thoughts and feelings at some point on the weekend. So one thing that I have been thinking about a lot is another sort of like aspect of stigma I think or just like maybe not so much stigma but like our misconceptions surrounding mental illness as a society is um like in general I think we have a really um a really hard time conceptualizing it as an illness like any other illness like that's not I don't think that's that's a way that most people think about it um which obviously causes a lot of problems uh, because um, you end up you end up blaming people for what is essentially an illness that they can't control. That is obviously dangerous and not great. Um, actually, I'm gonna link in the description a really good video that I saw yesterday, today, at some point <laughs> um, about one man's sort of struggle to get his anxiety disorder, like, actually recognized by his work as a real illness. And it's really good, so I'm gonna link that in the description. Uh, you should check it out. Anyway, so that is in general a thing, but then I think within that, um, I think we even have, have a tendency to sort of, um, find, find some cases of mental illness like some specific people more like valid than others and I think we do that based on sort of like um our misconceptions about what causes mental illness because definitely like there can be external factors that that influence it like like people who have who have experienced like traumatic events in their life like abuse and things like that are much are are very likely to to experience some sort of mental health problems but um that's not like a necessity like it's it's possible to to have mental health problems without without um having experienced traumatic events or things like that but i think that we have this sort of roadblock where it's like oh like what reason do you have to be depressed like me like i'm a middle class cisgendered straight white girl like i'm very privileged um so it's 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 that sort of thing where it's like well then what right do you have to to be depressed? And so we do that a lot and I think that that's dangerous because it um it again it just puts blame on the on the person because it's like oh like this can't actually be real because there's no reason for it so it must just be you being weak or something. And I think we have a tendency to tendency to do that and I think that that can cause a lot of harm and sort of like the way that I conceptualize it this is my analogy I guess for you is like so we can all agree that smoking causes lung cancer yes cool so but that doesn't mean that like if there's this person who happens to get lung cancer and never smoked a day in their life that doesn't mean that their lung cancer is less valid or less real or less serious than a smoker's lung cancer, right? Like, nobody would think that. Nobody would be like, oh, you have lung cancer, do you? You never smoked. I don't believe that. Um, like, nobody would do that. And so I think we need to uh, take the same sort of... Um, we need to alter our, our mindset and take the same sort of view towards mental health as we do to physical health. And then the other thing that I have to say about stigma is, I think guess it goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning of my video, um, I was saying why I was scared to do this, and I was scared of what people would think of me. 
And that's, that's definitely a roadblock, is that is that you are scared of what people will think of you because of stigma. But I think another really dangerous aspect of stigma is internalized stigma, because, um, yeah, I'm afraid that people will think that about me, but, like, also, um, there are times, like, it was worse at the beginning, like, I, I'm better at not believing it so much now, but, like, there are times when I believed those things. But it's not just that I was afraid that other people would think I was weak, or that other people would think that it was my fault, or other people would think that I should just be able to snap out of it, or things like that. Like, I thought that about myself. So, you, you feel a lot of shame about that, and... And so that's just really damaging because it is then on top of, it just adds, it just adds to sort of like the spiral for one thing. But then also, like, it's one thing to, um, to know that people might, might judge you on something, but, but knowing that those judgments will be unfounded, like, that's one thing. It's still hard to face those judgments, but it's a lot easier than if you think that those judgments are right. Oh, so that's another thing that, another point that I just want to make about how, how stigma can be really dangerous like that, is I think that, that like any, like any sort of prejudice, there's the, there's the, the, the chance and the, the tendency for it to become internalized, and, and that's, I think that's one of the, the scariest parts, because because, yeah, if you don't think that what's happening to you is valid, then you're less likely to get help and you're more likely to blame yourself. And um, just a lot of bad things will come with that. This has been part two of me talking about stigma and mental health. Um, yeah, I hope that this has been helpful or interesting or possibly illuminating to you in some way. So, there you go. Um, thank you for listening to this uh, again, and have a lovely day, and Michael, I'll see you on the weekend, and I'll see all of you next Tuesday.